Hello and welcome everyone to Whittle Field at Steinecker Stadium in Perrysburg. This is a Division 5 Region 18 final between the Elmwood Royals 12 and 1 on the season and the Liberty Center Tigers 13 and 0. Kevin Peel, Mark Shine with you in the booth. Thanks for joining us and the WOSEG crew for all the action here tonight. Mark, very excited to see how this one plays out. Elmwood, never been in this stage before. Liberty Center making a return to this stage. Going to be fun to see how it plays out. Well, I think that the interesting part about this is how good offensively Elmwood has been all year long. If you look at Mason Oliver, you go, hey, look, the dude's got 1,974 yards and 24 rushing touchdowns. He's the star of the game. No, he's not because Hayden Wickard, he's thrown for 3,089 yards and 31 scores. Between the two of them, over 5,000 yards of total offense, 55 touchdowns. They have had a fine year offensively. A lot of people to throw the football to. And so this Elmwood team really has done a lot of good things offensively on the season. And to conquer the battle of the woods like they did last week, 28-7, yep. to seven, knocking off their rival, it certainly gives extra luster to them reaching this far. But well, the goal's not achieved yet. And especially when you consider they lost them in the regular season. That's their one loss, a 49-48 game, and just absolute shootout. Um, the weather this evening, I'd be surprised if we get to shoot out status the way the weather is this evening. <laughs> we can cover that a little bit later on. But uh, certainly Elmo's had a very solid offensive year. And, of course, you look at 12-1, and one, they've got about six guys who were Northwest District this year. So they've been honored in that respect as well. Liberty Center, they are coming off a 34 nothing win over Coldwater in the regional semifinal last week. That is no small feat to beat a playoff a team that has really done well throughout the years in cold water, they're coming in running high too. Well, cold water had some people who were hurt, mm -hmm. um, and, and that's obviously part of the Liberty's have played extremely well in that particular contest. We're going to break for the national anthem. We're back after this. You're watching high school playoff football, WSN. And welcome back, everyone, to Perrysburg. And of course, continuing with our pregame festivities is Elmwood and Liberty Center about to square off. and. Yeah, there were plenty of cold water uh, players out in that game last week, but still the way they were able to win that game, impressive, even though they maybe uh, were a little overmatched. Uh, well, absolutely. If you take cold water and you shut them out, you put 34 on the board. I, I, I'm, if you play any type of good cold water football team, that is quite an accomplishment. So obviously the defense was very, very good um, that you saw from Liberty Center. Has it been throughout the playoffs? And, of course, that they've just got a monstrous offense. That Their line is exceptionally good. If you look at them, they, they average 226 across the offensive line, and that's with a guy in there weighing 160 pounds. So the rest of those guys are some very, very big people. Zane Zyder, of course, the, the quarterback, I mean, he's had a fine year this year. He's only thrown the ball 127 times, but he's rushed it for 734 yards. Matthew Orr, 1,327 yards rushing. Colton Cruz, 1,086 yards rushing. And behind that big offensive line, they are very, very dangerous. Yeah, I was going to ask you how you felt this wing T offense of Liberty Center was going to factor in against what is a very good Elmwood defense. Well, the other part about that is you know, everybody runs, you know, five wide outs, or they can read right outs go two by two, and you don't see this wing T stuff a lot in a, a team that, that dominates or, or attempts to dominate on the ground. I think it's a short week. Uh, obviously, in the playoffs, you got a week to do so, and to prep for something that's different than what you see throughout most of the season is kind of important. And Elmwood, of course, with all the offensive weapons that we were discussing earlier, too. Royals coming in and, of course, had that tough loss to Eastwood, 49-48, that we were referencing. But they put together really an all-around effort to win 28-7 to in dominating fashion last week. What does the offense of the Royals need to do to keep rolling? Well, I think you know it's the balance is the key. And a moment ago, I started to speak about the weather. It's 25 degrees right now. There's a 17-mile-an-hour wind. The chill factor is at 14. And that is at 7 p.m. Now, what's it going to be like by 9 p.m.? The wind is very, very strong. Uh, for the most part, it's blowing across the field uh, from the, uh, the Elmwood side towards us. So it, it's not going to be a factor as far as who kicks it with the wind or kicks against the wind, but how it just affects the ball in the air, either from the quarterback or from a punter, a field goal kicker type situation. And that's going to be a situation to deal with as, of course, the game goes through. And almost getting sent for kickoff here between the Royals and the Tigers. And, of course, there is a bit of a breeze that's kicking up as well that will play in from the south. Well, make it more of the west as well, too, coming, kind of coming across the field from the far side to the near side as you watch it on your screen here today. Hallmark moment for Perrysburg High School, by the way, Mark, and I know they're very excited uh, to host this game. They've been looking for a regional quite like this uh, for quite some time, and to be able to, to host a game like this, Elmwood selling out Bowling Green the way they did last week against Eastwood. 
it's really cool to see it all culminate for Perrysburg in this hosting this game. Kevin, I got here at five minutes after five <laughs> for a, a reason. I did some radio stuff down in Lima while I was setting in my car. The, there, there must have been 65 to 70 yards of people waiting to get in at a few minutes after 5. By the time it got to be 5.30 and they opened that gates, it was 110, 120 yards of people just waiting to get in here. Amazing. And, and on a night when the weather's like this, you're going to sit for an hour and a half before you actually you know, get to see action on the field. Um, the, the, the crowd interest this evening is very, very big, and Perrysville is a fine facility to host this particular game. And so Liberty Center, as you watch it in the black jerseys here today, left to right, they'll maneuver in this opening quarter. As you watch it, the Elmwood Royals are decked in white. A regional final matchup in Region 18. Very excited to see how it all plays out. The winner will face Canfield, South Range, or Perry in the state semifinals next week at Clyde. We'll see how it all pans out. Of course, tonight's scoreboard is presented by Swanton Welding Company, providing custom welding and fabrication services since 1956. Learn more at swantonweld.com. WSN this week contacted Clyde on Thursday. As soon as that came out, mm. we want to be there. So <laughs> Absolutely. You know, we're looking for that opportunity. We'll be there tomorrow night with the football game that takes place there as well. Back to Clyde hopefully next to Friday night. Yeah, this is the featured showing of the uh, Friday evening games here around Northwest Ohio, but so much action coming up on Saturday night with five games and very excited to see how that plays out as well. We're going to keep you busy here on the WOSN Airwaves. Here we go. We're off and rolling here at Perrysburg. The ball slips through the hands of the return man, Colton Bradford, into the end zone, and he's going to get down on it there, and just with a touchback, the Liberty Center there was uh, racing down the field to try and recover that fumble, but smartly played there. Colton Bradford just getting down to a knee. Well, that's one of those situations. You know, Was that a weather type of situation? Did the wind affect the ball was coming down, or? Did he get some dust blowing in his eyes? Any, any type of situation which could have occurred there. And so it will be first and 10 for the Elmwood Royals starting this drive at their own 20-yard line. And they do spread it out with four receivers, three to the wide side. And back to throw on that first pass of the game. It's a screen and nothing doing. Back to the line of scrimmage, and that was it. The catch for Mason Oliver, that decorated senior running back, but he had no room to roam, second and 10. Well defended by Liberty Center. That's obviously one of those, let's start off with a completion. Let's get our quarterback's uh, mental health at a good position, but defense recovered in a hurry. They sure did. Second down. Man in motion as Hayden Wickard will throw it out there and it's dropped incomplete. Mason Mossbarger, the intended target there as they rolled Wickard out to that far side and he just couldn't haul in the short reception, third and long. That, that's a catch he's going to make 99% of the time. Uh, you, again, is it nerves a little bit early? Uh, was he concerned about that, that defensive back coming up and putting a hit on him? But that's a ball he's going to catch. Third and 10 already. Wickard has Oliver with him in a pistol formation. Wickard has Oliver behind him. Calls for the football to throw, and it's a draw play. Oliver gonna try and sprint forward to get the first down, cross the 25, but no further. Trenton Cruz, the junior linebacker, brings him down. It'll be fourth down in about three coming up. Elmwood will have to punt. Looked like there was some room to run off the right side of the formation as the D-backs were thinking to pass, and, but they did recover quick enough to make the, uh, the tackle. And so a very nice stop there for Liberty Center on their first drive of the game defensively. And we'll see how this punt is affected by the wind. Instead, they keep it out of the wind. First bounce at the 48 of the Tigers, and it will roll dead right around the 41, scooped up by Frank Blair. And now the Liberty Center Tiger, Zane Zider, leading the way with the senior QB, hoping to lead another very efficient night offensively for the Tigers. He's had a fine year. He's got a lot of weapons to look at, and, and of course a nice offensive line to run behind or to protect him when he chooses to throw the football. Three and out, Elmwood. Mm -hmm. Sure was a great stop for the Tigers early on. Great Liberty Center section below us here on the east side of the stadium. 
And they're going to try and do the end around there. And Colton Cruz is bottled up for a loss of two as that right defensive side of the line caved in to stop Cruz going around the edge. They tried to run the jet sweep out of uh, the motion that he was going to, and Elwood acted very quickly to that. Yeah, great defensive stop. We'll bring up second down and 12. Coach Casey Moeller, knowing this is a very stiff competition, a great test for his team. Elmwood here today. There's a run straight up the middle and cutting it outside. Still plenty of room there for Matthew Orr. He's racing inside the 20, breaks another tackle, and then Orr gets leveled at the four-yard line by Mason Mossbarger. But that is a massive gain all the way inside the five-yard line, and he nearly scored. Well, he broke one tackle and then got chased out of bounds right about the five, four, five-yard line. But what a huge pickup, and obviously looking for something up inside. How about that for a start for Orr, 56 uh, yards. Not bad. On that run. He's got 23 touchdowns on the year. Let's see if he gets the football again or they go to Colton Cruz. Yep, Orr in the backfield along with Cruz, as Mark was mentioning. And Orr has it. Touchdown. Matthew Orr pounds it in. A three-play drive, and the Tigers take the first lead of the game. They did. They rewarded the young man. You know, you break one for 56. We're going to give you the football that you put it in the end zone. And that he did. His 24th rushing touchdown of the season. Yeah, tremendous feat. This rushing attack just keeps finding plays. A big play there or 56 yards. And then he goes the final four to cap off the drive. And trying to make it 7-0 on the Swanton Welding scoreboard. Waiting the point after, and it is up, and it is good. Seven to nothing, Liberty Center, the lead over Elmwood early on in the first quarter on WOSN. Our scoreboard tonight presented by Swanton Welding Company, providing custom welding and fabrication services since 1956. Learn more at swantonweld.com. Seven to nothing, the Tigers lead the Royals. A three play, 58 yard drive in less than a minute, Mark. That's how you punch it in with the well, run game. How about that? You know, when you're looking at taking 49 seconds to, to, to put seven on the board, obviously the big touchdown run or nearly touchdown run was the key to that, the 56 yard run. And it's certainly that offensive line exerted itself uh, on that particular drive, particularly on plays two and three. And this is exactly where the Tigers want to be, playing with the lead. And try and get that running game going even further downhill as the game goes along. Max Walker to kick this one away. Another strong boot, and this one will bound into the end zone for a touchback. And Elmwood will start at their own 20-yard line. You know, interesting, Kevin. They didn't even try to field the football. Let's let's let the thing get in the end zone. We'll go to the 20, and and uh, after bobbling the first one and getting it into the end zone, uh, they're going to start drive number two on the 20 as well. Fan season 18 of Sports Report started Friday night. Join Patrick Kamler for a full hour of the most comprehensive football coverage around all season long. Fridays at 10 at w on WTLW. Yeah, it's going to be basketball starting yes. next week too. Very excited for the basketball slate coming up. Man in motion here and the shovel pass to Alex Arnold who's going wide. Arnold gets upended there near the 27 yard line by Landon Cruz, the six foot junior. It's a nice solid play to start the drive for the Royals. It certainly was. They obviously want to get a little momentum back here, but they ran a little jet sweep action himself, caved in the left side of the defensive formation and picked up seven. And a nice simple pass, try and get the drive going. More like a, a run with some flair. There, the shovel pass. Second down and about three. And trying to cut this one back, but nothing doing. As that run piled up, that Liberty Center defensive line in the middle creating some problems. There was no room for Oliver to roam. Third and down and four. You know, the defensive uh, player of the, the year uh, defensively is Butts, and, or Owen Box, excuse me, and it's 6'4", 266, and he's going to be a load to cover inside it. Where's number 62? Another quick third down for the Royals, trying to get some offensive momentum here. They throw to the sticks, and that ball is caught. A nice grab by Micah Oliver, the junior. Just had enough for the first down, and Elmwood's offense will stay on the field, gain of five. 
A quick out that time. Take the ball to the 33-yard line. Pick up six. Just have to ease themselves into it. Royals with their first. First down of the game. And a throw downfield. Nice oh, catch well, at was. midfield. That was a tremendous grab going sky high. Micah Oliver. They give him another ball. He goes up to get it and another first down. Picks up 18 that time. That's the second consecutive play. Actually moved it back to the 50, so we'll call it a 17-yard game. Now Elmwood playing with some pace here. The man in motion is Lex Voska. Hand off Oliver with room. It's Mason Oliver. So he gets across midfield to the 42. Gain of eight. Here come the Royals. See if they can answer. Obviously, that's something you want to do. You've got a strong offensive season all year long. See if you can answer the opening score by Liberty Center, and they're on the move right now. This will be play number six of this drive. Second down and two. Alone in the gun is Wickard. He'll keep it. First down and a little bit more, too, as he gets to the 36. Six more yards. First run for Wickard, and it was successful. Yeah, called run. Sometimes you look at a draw in those situations. Called run, and they're back to the line of scrimmage in a hurry. They keep the pace moving here to the 36. To the air. Has a open. man down the sideline and just out of the reach. Incomplete. Micah Oliver with a stutter move on the far sideline. Burned Jeff Zacharias and just couldn't quite. A flag Make the down. catch, but yeah. there's a flag on the near side of the field just outside well, the hash marks. Reporting to LC. First flag of the game. We'll get the call here. Oh. A personal foul going to help out the Royals. They'll take it. Automatic first down. So it was on the near side of the field. Of course, the football was on the far side of the field. We were following the action over there, so I cannot tell you exactly what the call was. Personal foul is the result in 15 yards. Now just outside the red zone are the Royals. Fake throw, and had a man open, but maybe rushed that throw just a tad. Cannon, Cannon Endicott, the intended receiver. Small senior. window, small window to put that one into, Kevin, and he did rush it a bit, but it's just a small window there to try to squeeze that ball in. So second down and 10. Royals mixing the run and the pass on this drive successfully. Ninth play of the drive coming up for the Royals. And nice designed run here for Mason Oliver and is able to get near the chains. Oliver exploding on that outside. Gain nine, almost 10. Third and short here for the Royals. Took the ball off the right side of formation. And they'll try it again with Oliver. You know, the, the down marker said it was just second down. Did I miss a, a play in there? I had a third. <laughs> yeah, it was third down, but in any case. Well, they just flipped it over to third. Uh, so I missed a, something in there. That was no, no gainer right there. Well, there was the incompletion after the personal foul. And then that run by Oliver, but they're saying third and one. Well, that's where we're at, third yep. and one. <laughs> I don't think the Royals will complain with a potential extra down here. Oliver, outside he goes. Oliver jukes to his right and goes over the boundary at the six yard line. That's first down and goal for the Royals. Well, you can see his, his shiftiness of his footwork as the ball was kind of jammed up inside. He wanted to go off left, left tackle, he took it outside and got the football down to the seven yard line, a pickup of six. Goal to go situation, alone in the gun is Hayden Wickard. It's a throw, pressured, and finds a man, and it's to the goal line, Mason Got Mossbarger. In. He is in for the touchdown, and Elmwood does bounce back with a drive of their own. To get on the board, it's seven to six. And Good jumping patience. there. Yeah, he waited a long, long, long time and finally found his man, and then the good take to hit and still get to the end zone. 
in the face of a ton of pressure. Wickard able to deliver a good enough ball, and then Mossberger makes the rest of the moves necessary. And this extra point squeaks through there for Mattia Susan. And that will send us to break. Our Swanton Welding scoreboard, 7-7 the score on WOSI. Our scoreboard is presented by Swanton Welding Company, providing custom welding and fabrication services since 1956. Learn more at swantonweld.com. Elmwood, how about that for a yeah. quick response? 7-7 seven, seven tie almost halfway through the first. Really important answer, I thought, by Coach Bishop's team. They give up that e kind of relatively easy score thanks to the long run. Then they go 11 plays, 80 yards, 335 off the clock, and they knock this thing back up again. Liberty Center went 58 yards in under a minute to score their touchdown. And a different drive, 80 yards and 335 for the Royals. And on the return out to the 28-yard line, that's where LC will begin their next drive. And a little shake it up at the end of the play is Landon Amstutz, the six-foot senior. Return man. And uh, that lower leg injury doesn't look good. He's got a brace on his right knee, and we'll wonder if it has something to do with that. <laughs> well, Coach Bishop, you like what you saw in that offensive series. Yeah. Now you're hoping to try and avoid the big plays against you defensively as this next series starts for the Tigers. And Zane Zider comes out in the gun. And a high snap. Can't get on it right away. Ball's still loose. Still loose in that pile, and now the Royals have it at the 20. Oh, a high snap that they couldn't corral, and he just never got control of it. And the Royals were all over the football eventually. First turnover today. We'll go to Liberty Center and certainly put Elmwood in a great spot right here. And so just like that, they get the football immediately back. Liberty Center defense has been good all year long, and they will now be tested on and consecutive drives. And just out on the field for an extended period of time, and now they're going to have to go right back out there. Oh Mason my. Oliver got crushed. Hello. Oh, my goodness. Landon Bockelman just sent him into another dimension. You can feel that one up here. Lost a yard. Wow. Wow. <laughs> that is the hardest hit I've seen all season. I, I would agree with that. That's the, uh, <laughs> it's a big timer right there. It's a throw and a catch at the 15, and they'll down it right there. Catch for Cannon Endicott, his first reception of the game. And just kind of slipped down in front of a couple defensive backs there, especially Zane Zider, who was nearby. Gain of six. As windy as this is, you wonder what would happen if this is four down territory, or do you think about three if you don't get the first down here? Third and five. And they're gonna pitch it out this way. Oliver trying to find some room, he cannot. And again, near the play was Landon Bockelman, but he had plenty of help, a gain of one, fourth down and four. Defense uh, has obviously swarmed to the left side of the Offensive formation and no room to run. Just tucked his head and was able to pick up a yard. It is going to go for it on fourth down. There's the answer to Mr. Shine's question. There it is. They're going to go for it. After a big fumble for the LC offense, Elmo going to try and convert this fourth down. They just rush three. Steps up. Throws, open man, and he threw it behind him. Oh. Cannon Endicott had leaked out to the near flat, and he just couldn't deliver the accurate ball. An incompletion, and they turn it over on downs. Yeah, that they did. They had him out there. The pass was on the wrong side of him. He tried to turn his body around and secure the football, but could not do so, and a big stop for LC. Massive stop. Liberty Center survives what could have been a catastrophic fumble. Not great field position here near their own 15, but they do get the ball back in a tie game. And he's going to go under center this time. Play fake. Pressure. And throws it out there. Incomplete. Zyder took a hit to the pressure coming from Micah Oliver up the middle. 
incompletion, good, second and ten. Good heads up play. Get outside the pocket, just air mail it into the end zone, or onto the sideline, I should say, and let's go play another down. That's literally survival there. Just get rid of the football. Zyder, Smart decision by the senior. 73 completions, 127 attempts. Had six INTs against him this year. And a rare fumble moments ago on the previous series. Second down and 10, back to the ground, and this is Orr to the 18. And not much further. Three maybe squeaked out, four. Third and about six for Liberty Center. Now we'll have to see that passing game come back into the fold here on this third and six. Throw the ball to the opposite sideline. You're throwing into the wind. Throw it towards the Liberty Center sideline, and you throw it with the wind. That can always affect things. Here comes Blitz. They're going to roll him right. And throws out there. Catch made at the 28 and blasted out of bounds near the 30. And a nice grab and a first down made. That was Colton Chambers. Oh, Landon Cruz, the catch, excuse me, for a first down. Landon, 11 catches on the season for 176 yards and three scores. And a third first down to the 31. A nice passing play designed. They're rolling the QB right. Zyder under center. And we have a flag coming yeah. from the far side, a false start on the Tigers. It's going to move them back five, second penalty of the game. Bit of a tough penalty to take after a nice third down conversion. Yeah, we don't want to get behind the sticks. Uh, obviously, you'd like to run the football and, and stay ahead of the chains, and that's just going to make it first and 15. First down and 15. That's when your running backs have been this successful this year. Your quarterback is one of them. Designer alone in the shotgun. Or in motion right to left. He was trying to serve as a blocker. Zyder gets yeah. loose. 40 has a first down. And he's taken down in the secondary by Alex Arnold. Enough for a first down, gain of 18. What great wheels he had right there. He, got, he did get that block that you described. And when he got to the edge, he was able to pick up that, that uh, 17 yards. Boy, he is a runaway freight train oh when he gets into space, isn't he? Great wheels. He, yes. he runs hard. He's got good speed as well to the 44-yard line. A receiver each way. And tailback in the gun with Zyder. First and 10 near midfield. It's high snap, too. And trying to stretch it right. Got away oh. from one tackle, but not the second. Cut down there, Colton Cruz. A nice hit there applied. Just when you think that perhaps he had broken a couple of tackles. And then a nice tackle come up from the safety position to make that. Yeah, they kept rallying yeah, to the football there. Connor Sterling, a sophomore linebacker, actually was the one who made the tackle. Thought we were going to see another landed Bockelman-like hit, but delivered from Elmwood's side defensively instead. Bounced off a tackler. And or he that handoff wasn't yeah. clean. Looked like he was too quick to get to his QB Zyder and kind of ran into him, no gain, third uh, long. Mesh point was not good that time between quarterback and running back, and we're going to look at third and 11. Third and 11. Yeah, that play, just the timing wasn't there. From the 43. Play coming in from the sideline by Riley Chapa. Another senior playmaker on the edge here for the Tigers. Spread it out with three wide or the running back. The roll Zyder out, throws. As a man, did he make the catch? It's gonna be close, and he did. At the 44, yeah. a first down, he had to straddle the sideline, made the grab, Landon Cruz as a Liberty Center first down. Had the appearance of going deep. He looked at him all the way that time. He's gonna go deep, and instead, he pulled up short and made, got the nice catch right at the boundary. Difficult catch to make, falling into his own sideline, but he made it. First and 10, and now after that 
turnover on downs. Liberty Center putting together a nice drive. And they'll go wide this time. Taking down Colton Cruz. And the blockers set up, but a nice job to break his way through. Owen Seedorf, the junior defensive lineman, 6'3", 195, held him to a gain of two. Yeah, it looked like there was some room to run on the left side, but the defense was able to react quickly. And when you have Matthew Orr setting the edge for you, typically in pretty good shape, but Still picked pursuit. up a couple. Here's Orr in motion. Move him out there. Zyder looks his way, then throws down oh. the middle as a wide open man. Hauled in. He's going to house it. Touchdown, Tigers. Going all the way was Aiden Hammontree, the senior tight end. Well, you talk about what a formation can do for you. As soon as the uh, Matthew Orr went in motion, the linebacker chased him down in the perimeter, and that left that zone open right down the middle of the field. 42-yard touchdown pass. Elmwood getting a sideline warning as well on the play, a 42-yard touchdown reception for Aiden Hammontree to make it 13-7 Tigers. How about that for a drive? 85 yards in distance. Really pieced it together just before the quarter end. Really good play conception from Casey Moeller. The movement took the uh, linebacker out of the position and then they ran the tight end. You know, you know, see Hammond's got three touchdown catches on the year. He's not one of their primary weapons. They found him. Sophomore kick, kicker Ian Rosebrock pounds it through. And Liberty Center has a 14-7 lead on the Swanton Welding scoreboard. Presented by Swanton Welding Company. The scoreboard tonight providing custom welding and fabrication services since 1956. Learn more at swantonweld.com. We saw some of the great features of this offense, both through the air and on the ground on that drive mark. They really pieced it all together there to go 85 yards. Yeah, I would agree with that. That was, you know, they ran it, they ran it, they got a couple hit a pass, one for a first down, then that one right there for the touchdown. So really good job of mixing things up. And uh, they were about, what, uh, nine seconds mm -hmm. short to, or, or for being four minutes, is that how it went? Yep. Right around there, right around that four-minute mark. 409, I got on my clock. <laughs> and Elmwood with just uh, 18 ticks left here in this particular first quarter. Find themselves down 14-7. And if you're Coach Moeller, especially after that frustrating fumble, you really like the circumstances you're in there because your defense stepped up, got a turnover on downs, and then your offense rose to life again with a positive drive put seven points on the board. Well, what does he tell his players? Uh, fellas, they haven't stopped us yet. We, we stopped us once. They've not stopped us yet. Max Walker to kick it away. Sends it deep again to the eight. Returned by Micah Oliver. Oh, he is trying to cut it back near side already. Oliver, boy, he really did well to get across the 30. <laughs> that return looked doomed from the start, but he's able to get decent field position for the Royals out past their own 30. See what happens here as they play out to one more play here in this quarter. For a second, it almost didn't look like he was even going to get to the 15-yard line, huh. but he found a way to get to the 32. And it's first down and 10 for Aiden Wickard and company. Could be the final play of the stands up. He'll throw. And as a man out in the flat, Arnold another grab. And Liberty Center rallying to the football there for a modest gain of two to the 34, and that will end the opening quarter. Liberty Center leads this regional final matchup over Elmwood, 14-7 on the Swanton Welding scoreboard. We'll be right back with second quarter action on WLSN. Come back here. And we're back, Swanton Welding scoreboard, 14-7. Liberty Center in the lead over the Elmwood Royals as we begin the second quarter of this D5 Region 18 Regional Final. Kevin Peel, Mark Shine with you here. First play of the quarter and a screen set up. And got around the first tackler and Micah Oliver. Nice pass to the edge, gets to the 43. That is a first down. Moving the chains are the Royals. We'd love to hear some of those first quarter stats that you have for us, Mark. Well, the Liberty, Benton, or Liberty Center, 81 yards on the ground, 68 through the air. 
quarterback was three for 449 total yards, five first downs, and they had one turnover. Elmwood rushed it for 35. Their quarterback was seven of 11, but for just 38 yards, 73 total yards, six first downs, and no turnovers. And another nice run. Mason Oliver oh. shrugs off a man and is taken down at the 50-yard line. Mason Oliver gained a full head of steam for seven. That is his ninth carry for 35 yards. Obviously, Matthew Orr has four carries and 64 yards since he got you know, 60 of those on one play. And Zyder has an 18-yard run as well. 16 yards per carry there for Mr. That's Orr. good. Second down and three, another handoff, and or, or rather Oliver trying to fight to get that first down. Looks like he's going to be just short. He reached the 48, bring up third and one after the gain of two. But even though that play didn't look very positive, you could see him falling forward, yeah. driving the legs. That's the type of running back he is. 6'1", 185, and a senior. Veteran play there to squeak out what he could. Another third and short. Wickard from the gun and a handoff. Oliver will follow his blocks. Oh, that's going to be close. Got to the chains, and I think they're going to give it to him. Yes, they Barely. Are. Yeah. Gain of one, just yeah. enough. We are on the uh, <laughs> LC side, and there are fans a little unhappy that at least get a measurement out of it. Good defensive play up front. If it was up to them, it wouldn't yeah, have been a first down. That's but correct. 11 Just carries now and 38 yards. 38 tough yards for Mason Oliver. Nothing easy. The Tigers' run defense has been stout. Gets away from a would-be sack down the field. Wickard and has a man up to the 32-yard line. Micah Oliver, another grab, and that's a first down. Boy, did a really nice job there of avoiding Seth Narvel. Boy, that First down to the 15, or 32, picked up 15. And he just turned his head around at the right time to make sure he got away from that blitzer. Trying to stretch this yeah. out, and he's going to go down for a loss of two, maybe three. Back to the 35 again. Tigers' right defensive side going right with the QB. They did a good job of stringing things out. No place to run that time and knocked him down. Second and 13 from the Liberty Center, 35. Bringing a linebacker. Roll the other way, throw. Nice grab at the 25. And that one on the near sideline to Mossbarger. Is that short? I believe it is, isn't it? Yeah, they'll give him the 26 yard line, gain of nine. His third catch for today. Moss Barger and Micah Oliver have been very busy in the past game. They're down in four. Mason Oliver behind Wickard. Pressure right away and gets away from him and has a first down and falling forward to the 18 yard line. Looked like a pinball there <laughs> yeah. bouncing off defenders six to get four, in the red zone. You know, six four, 200 pounds and you know, he's able to, to stretch his frame out, pick up seven. Seven hard-earned yards, but achieved the line to gain and then some. Kept the drive moving. Tenth play of this drive. Mason Oliver, patient run, and pushes off one defender from him near the 15. Doesn't get much further. Gains four. Here's another look. So you can pull a couple of offensive linemen up inside and try to create a little bit of space and then what a hard run right there to the 15. Not scared to take on Tanner Klein, the senior outside linebacker. He was able to push him off of him, but didn't gain much more after that. Been a four plus minute drive. And they played at their pace, but still run some clock off. Here's how Coach Bishop drew it up. And out in the flat. As Oliver, Oliver is going to be pushed forward and then he'll break away for the touchdown. Micah Oliver on the screen pass. A great and block by Jack Hummel. Down one. Wow. Watch him get out there and hit, make a hit right there on the, on the cornerback. And then oh. cut back inside and bounces into the end zone from 15 yards out. Micah Oliver making men miss. 
finding pay dirt. Big touchdown there. An extra point to try and tie up this game. Like Oliver, five catches, 60 yards, and a score now. And a high snap. We'll have to roll right here, see if anyone breaks open, throws a jump ball. Well, not a jump ball, but just throwing it up for grabs, and it's incomplete. Landon Murray, the closest unintended receiver there. They were going for the PAT, but the botch snap leads to the failed try. Liberty Center still has the lead, 14-13. Second quarter action on WLSN. Our scoreboard tonight presented by Swanton Welding Company, providing custom welding and fabrication services since 1956. Learn more at swantonweld.com. Liberty Center still has the lead, but it's now 14-13 after the 15-yard touchdown catch and run by Micah Oliver from Hayden Wickard. They get them on the board. The uh, PAT turned into two-point try accidentally with the bad snap, no good. And so and Liberty Center keeps the lead. Now this yeah. kickoff's going out of bounds. Good play right at Chapa. Let that ball skip out of bounds over there. He waited a long, long time and finally realized that was the best play. That's the first marker against Elmwood here today in any sort of fashion. So from the 35-yard line, the Tigers uh, will begin this drive. The snap that kind of went awry a little bit is not actually a turnover, but it cost them a point. Mm -hmm. So that, that's a, it's obviously as the game plays along, if it stays as close as one would imagine it's going to be, that could come back to be huge later on. Absolutely. And if you're Elmwood, maybe you have to risk a two-point try that you maybe didn't want to do yep. down the road. We'll see. Zane Zider and company back to work. He'll be under center from the 35. And they'll pitch it. Big blocking room here and a nice run. Colton Cruz is on the loose. Cruz at the 35. Now the 30. Cruz to the 20. Stutter stepping. Spins nearly out of the tackle. He's down at the 11. Colton Cruz with an explosive run on first down. That really was. And the patience. Once he broke containment, trying to get a block out here from uh, number 15, Aiden Hamtree. All the way down to the 11-yard line. So, what is that? Uh, 39 50, and 15 is 54. 250-plus yard runs already for Liberty Center in this first half. You know what you do if your first three carries have been for a negative one yard? You bust one off yeah. of 54 and <laughs> get that stat number back up there. That will help the yards per carry, to say the least. Zyder under center, first and 10 from the 11. Now Orr try and bruise one up inside, and not much running room to the nine. Did get two. Second and eight. Boy, the big plays. You mentioned Matthew Orr's long run, and now this long run by Colton Cruz. Big plays have been a difference here. They hit the long touchdown pass as well, 42, yard, eight, 42 yards to Hammond Tree. So big plays have been a huge part of what Liberty Center has done today. Plenty of offense to go around. And they can get a first down. Mm -hmm. To the one, if they got to the one yard line, exactly it would be a first down. Hand off and Cruz looked like he was going to break away, but other ideas there from Allen Sterling, the senior middle linebacker. And that's a minimal gain to the 10. Yeah, Actually filling, a bit of a loss maybe. Filling from his linebacker position. That was one of those that from our vantage point looked like he had room to run, and then all of a sudden the linebacker came up and got to him and knocked him down. Just inside the 10. This third down situation for much, the Tigers. Much like LC earlier, this would be a huge stop if they can keep him out of the end zone right here. Or the running back on the right hip of Zyder. Nearly another high snap. He'll keep it. Zyder explodes yeah, to did. the house. Zane Zyder from 10 yards out scores, and Liberty Center has a 20 to 13 lead. A nearly busted play. Didn't look like it with the execution there. Zyder going through a hole and rushing to the end zone. The high snap certainly did not affect his uh, ability to get up inside and put one on the board right there. Just how he drew it up. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Minute 58. Another extra point try coming up here from Rose Brock and his boot is true. Liberty Center goes right down the field on four plays to extend their lead to eight, 21 to 13 on WOSN. 
And another successful Liberty Center drive to take a 21-13 lead on the Swanton Welding scoreboard. Before you can blink, Tigers up front eight here now, Mark. Well, Wickard has completed 11 out of 15 passes. He's been able to move them, and there's plenty of time left. And they finally got Mason uh, Oliver able to run a little, but he's got 12 carries for 42 yards. So they've got some offense here, and Elwood certainly would like to score because Liberty Center will get the football first in half number two. Certainly something to keep track of here. Nice return up that far side. That's Micah Oliver guided over the boundary near the 37. As we're under halfway through the quarter, neither team has used a timeout yet. Each has the full complement of three remaining. Could be key. The uh, Royals offense has been a little more methodical here in this first half. The free WSN Scores app is the easiest way to follow local high school sports. No one covers more schools, more sports, and more scores than WSN. Search WSN in the App Store or Android Play Store. Start the drive with a pass, and it's to the edge. That far side, 43-yard line achieved by Alex Arnold after his grab. A gain of six on first down. Good ball from Wickard finding his man. Yeah, he's now completed his last six passes. He seems to be, uh, you know, getting, getting it cranked up right here. It's good out pattern, good timing on that one. Mason Oliver, pistol formation behind Wickard. slightly onto the left hip now does Oliver. Oh, wrong direction, but broken forward, broken play for three yards. Well, yeah, you'll you. take it if you're Elmwood, although that play not drawn up as per design. Fumbled the snap a little bit, but got it up to where it's just third and one. That could have been much worse for the Royals. Seth Navarre just checked in number 70. He is the one who laid the big hit earlier with this short yardage situation. Now what team has outscored opponents 530 to 181 this year. Down eight here late in the first half. Mason Oliver has a first down past the 50 to the 49. Got away from Landon Buckelman. At least long enough to get the first down. Pick up a five. Angled his way to the right and picked up the first down. First down play. Quick pass. Another oh, catch for Oliver. Move. Nice, making a man miss. And Oliver torn down at the 36-yard line or the first one to get a paw on him. Another first down, gain of 13. Very well-timed play. Then you make the first man miss. And now you're to the 36 yard line. Sixth catch already. Now if you're Elmwood here, how much do you potentially <laughs> slow down? I mean, you're in a rhythm, that's the thing. That's but correct, and you're down, you need points. Want to use that clock as well. Oliver has a couple more yards to start this set of downs. Gain of three. Tanner Klein the stop. 14 carries, 50 yards now. Mason Oliver, he's had to work very hard for his yards today. Under four to go. That's one carry of nine yards, one carry of eight. The rest of them have been significantly less than that. And Oliver goes to the left, now cuts up field. And accelerates past the 30 to the 29. Short of the first down, it'll be third and three. Well, he needed 26 yards to go over 2,000 for the season. He did that back in the opening quarter. Mm -hmm. What a season. What a How career that? for Mason about Oliver. 2,000 yards in what this uh, 13 and a half football games, not quite. Amazing stats. Also says something about those big fellows up front, too. Third and three. Play clock's down. Yep, the Liberty Center crowd getting loud. It's a keeper for Wickard, and he has a first down. That he does. Spun down at the 23. Designed run all the way. I think they wanted to take it outside, but he cut it back in when he saw that hole right there, was able to pick up six. 
Under three to go in the half. Still moving the chains, but using some time as well are the Royals. Nice cutback, plenty of room. Here goes Alex Arnold to the outside. Arnold to the, the end zone. zone. He goes. Alex Arnold scores for Elmwood. And they're within two again. They put him in the backfield. And look at this play, cutting it back to his right. And then finding space, going along that edge. Good blocking Arnold to the house. Uh, the defense over pursued a bit. His sixth rushing town touchdown of the year. Is it already time for Coach Bishop to think about two? Has that look to it. Mm -hmm. They sure do. Alex Arnold, the 23-yard touchdown run. They will go for two. His first carry tonight gets him a touchdown from 23. Here's the PAT. Man in motion, roll right, throw the flat, off, intercepted. And you can't yeah, return you that. <laughs> yeah, those days are gone, aren't yeah, they? Yes, <laughs> they are. The, the two-point try, no good. Had a man out in the flat, but undercut. And intercepted there by Zane Zider. So Elmwood down two, but they do drive down and score. 240 to go in the half on WOSN. Swanton Welding scoreboard tonight. Providing custom welding and fabrication services since 1956. Learn more at swantonweld.com. 21-19 Liberty Center. The 23-yard touchdown run by Alex Arnold. An impressive and explosive play, but now there's time for the Tigers to try and go down and score the other way. 63 yards, eight plays, 313 off the clock, but what they have done is they've left Liberty Center two minutes and 40 seconds, and Liberty Center will get to football first in half number two, and that one's gonna go Ooh. in zone, oh. out of bounds. <laughs> out of bounds? Just out of bounds. Yep. That nearly made it. That's 15 yards. Yes. You realize where the, the football goes out of bounds, they're at about the one and a half yard line, it's a difference of 15 yards. Crazy. So they'll start this drive at the 35. And right now, the drives for Liberty Center tonight, Mark. Mm -hmm. Touchdown, fumble, touchdown, touchdown. Yeah, this will be their, what, fifth possession, I guess? Mm hmm. As you properly put it earlier, they stopped themselves on that fumble previously. Horror's going to fall backward to the 40-yard line. Good head of steam to gain five to start the drive. And they have all those timeouts to use as well. They do. Took it right up the middle for a five-yard gain on first down. I think Coach Moore will take a lot of those five-yard, seven-yard gains here in the next two minutes. And just north of two-minute offense here, yep. but plenty of time with all those timeouts. Especially the way they're always danger to break one. Yeah, you can run it several times here. They're going to again, and this one stacked up. Or taken down to the ground by Allen Sterling. Game of three. We'll see. We'll still get the huddle up here. And you almost have to make sure you pick this yeah, up, I was going to say, you? you have to pick this up or you're going to punt. So they, need the this, uh, they need this pair of yards right here, and obviously a huge time for the, the Royals to get a stop. And, and they bring way, people. We might see a timeout here. And a first down run. And to the 49. That's a great power run by Colton Cruz. That it was. And there's that timeout you were talking about right there. Now that they've gotten on the plus side of the field, we're going to take a timeout. And they will use their first in this opening half. What questions do you have about life, about God, about things happening in your community or family? Get answers when you watch Life Questions. Each week, four local pastors will discuss relevant topics and answer questions submitted by people just like you. Life Questions is on TV 44 Sundays at 1.30 and Wednesdays at 9.30 p.m. You can also find it online at WTLW.com. Look at the Royal students over there. They showed out again tonight. Uh, both sides both, did. It's a big crowd, and well, the traffic outside was difficult to get in. So it's, it's just one of those... You know, you got to appreciate that when the weather yeah. the way it is, the support you show young athletes and, and the enjoyment you get to come here and watch a high school football game at a good venue. We've had a good one so far. 
This is not fun sitting outside tonight. Uh, Mark and I can't relate. We're inside with the, crew, correct. <laughs> with the crew, but nonetheless, it well, makes the... Uh, I, I walked from the, the west press box where I thought we were to the east press box, <laughs> and that about did me in. So I, people setting out this, congratulations <laughs> to you. <laughs> First and 10 at the 49. And a run for Zyder. He'll juke outside. Oh Zyder, tons of room. One man to beat on the edge. Zyder breaks a tackle. He's gone. And he got a great block by Landon Cruz. Zane Zyder, 49 yards. And Liberty Center is a 27-19 lead. How about that? Good blocking on the edge to begin with. But then that wide out downfield doing his job. right Coming up right here. And then it's off to the races with that block right there. Stayed in bounds. Picked up the uh, touchdown. So much for using all the rest well, of that first yeah, half clock. Right. <laughs> they have left a minute well, 17 well, on the clock. Well, hold on just a moment. They said he stepped out at the oh, 15. Oh, did he really? So it was okay. a 34-yard run. Take the touchdown off the board. It looked like he stayed in bounds. Here's Orr. And now we're going to get a whistle and a flag. Okay, so there was the, the pandemonium that ensued there. He was marked out. And a false start called against Liberty Center, right. hence the frustration by Zyder. Back to the 20 it goes for first and 15. Uh, a pair of frustrations. Number one was he thought he got to the end zone, and number two then to get the penalty to back him up five. Let's see if we can catch it a little bit on the sideline here as he heads up the sideline, and here's he beats the block, it right. Mm, yeah. It's close. He might have got there. Officials got a better look than we do. Mm. Mm. What do you say? So think about that in the grand scheme of things because a touchdown taken off the board here. They're going to put a couple seconds back on the yeah. clock here at Steinecker Stadium. So you take a touchdown off the board, and now Liberty Center also behind the chains for this series they of are. downs. While they're putting time on the clock, James Eider was able to come over and talk to his coach about how he wants to handle this play. Huge sequence as the Royals try and get a stop. That's the third penalty against Liberty Center in this half for 25 yards. First and 15, Zyder has a man, lobs it out there, and he hauled it in that for the did. touchdown. Landon Cruz, a 20-yard touchdown reception. There's the touchdown for LC. Just well, beat him off the line. That's the guy who throw, threw what we thought was the key block a moment ago to get his quarterback in the end zone. That got called back. But instead, we throw the 20-yard touchdown pass. And Liberty Center will try and make it a two-score game with this extra point. Up by eight. Trying to take a nine-point lead. Rose Brock on for the PAT. And this drive didn't even take a minute and a half <laughs> to go down the field. That's correct. And we got offsides here. Now the question point. is, are you going to go for two here? Alex Arnold yeah. just took a little courtesy step over the line, moved everyone else. I don't think it makes much difference in the grand scheme of things whether you go for two or one at this particular point in time. Now, regardless, if you convert, it is a two-score game. Sure. They're, they're, they're asking uh, Coach Bowler what he wants to do with it. He said, move it up, but I think they're still going to go for the single PAT. Yeah, they were just waiting for the word from Coach Moeller. Let's move it the yard and a half forward. There you go. And PAT try. Ian Rosebrook is a PAT guy. 56 of 64 on the season. And it's up and good. Liberty Center has a 28-19 lead on the Swanton Welding scoreboard on WLSN. Well, Liberty Center for the fourth time in five first half drives finds the end zone. This time Landon Cruz, the ball from talented QB Zane Zyder. 
for the touchdown and a 28-19 lead. Kevin, I think this uh, this kickoff is very, very important. If you pin them back deep, Elmwood's liable to go, okay, let's run the clock and let's get out of here. If they get a good return, you know, they have a chance to put some points on the board yet, and we'll kind of see how Coach Bishop chooses to play that. And I think it all depends on the return and where it ends up. And considering how effective the Tigers' offense has been in this opening half, you kind of have you, to shoot you, for points here, I think. You Maybe. took the football to start the game because you wanted to put points on the board. Pop that one up short. And a return to the 32-yard line. And so a minute seven and a full docket of timeouts to work with. The quarterbacks hit six passes in a row to get to this particular point. It's got a touchdown pass. Two touchdown passes in the opening half. Mike Oliver, six catches, 73 yards, so he's got weapons. And as you said, all of his timeouts remaining. Easton Oliver, the running back, with Hayden Wicker, the QB. Roll him right to throw on first down. And Micah Oliver, another catch, and dives out of bounds. Smart decision there by Micah Oliver to get to the boundary and gain six on first down. Good out pattern, Just waited for the football over here. And as you said, did a good job of getting the football over the uh, boundary line to stop the clock. Yeah, did not want to have to use a timeout there on a six-yard play if you don't have to. That means you can throw something over the middle later on and still call a timeout after it's caught. Wicker will roll left and throw deep, Whoa. wide open. Man, he got it oh at the 32, a busted coverage. And there goes Alex Arnold for the score, oh. and Elmwood right back in it. Wow. Yeah, I no told everybody way. this was not going to be a shootout. And look at this. Good throw with a man in his face, too. Alex Arnold, 62 yards. That's a touchdown. And I think you were exactly right. That was a, a broken coverage type situation. Went 68 yards there in just those two plays. Wild West shootout here in Perrysburg and another wayward snap. Yeah. Can they corral this one? They throw it that out there, intercepted. Zane Zider is a man on a mission on these two point tries as he picks off his second one, and that will end that, again, fumbled snap there. Elmwood struggling, missing two, make it three PATs now, and the interception, but Elmwood now has cut it to 28-25 on the Swanton Welding scoreboard on WOSN. Two plays, 68 yards, 15 seconds. Alex Arnold, 62-yard touchdown grab, getting loose from his defensive back, and a great ball moving to his left from Hayden Wickard for the touchdown pass. But as Mark smartly put during the break, guess what? There's 52 seconds left in this half. And two timeouts, and with 4.27 to go in quarter number one, Liberty Center got the football. Since that time, each team's had the football twice, or three times, each team has scored three touchdowns. A lot of offense. I hope you like offense because you signed up for it if you're watching this game tonight. Nice return, and the ball's loose. Flag Elmwood came in. has yeah, it. A flag there came a flag. in, too. The Royals have the football. Mitchell Oliver recovers. Well, there was a collision out here, and I'm wondering if it was some type of illegal block involving uh, number no. 50. No. Looks like it's on Liberty Center. They're pointing that direction. Wow, what a turn here for Elmwood. Second turnover, and here's Elmwood with a chance. They've got all their timeouts remaining. Chop block, it was against Liberty Center. I thought it was Xander Zider, I thought. Penalty decline, yep. first down, Royals. 44 seconds, and they're, uh, what, about the 28-yard line? Yep. 
guess what has stopped oh boy. Liberty Center in this half? Two fumbles. That would be correct. Every other time they have put six or seven on the board. Here come the Royals down three. Right back to it. Wickard with Oliver behind him on first and ten. Blitz. And a handoff, and Oliver not much doing there. Maybe got back to the line of scrimmage. But again, because you have those timeouts to go to, you can run a play like that. And here's the first one. And the Royals here will use that first timeout. But in this case, Mark, they give you a fumble here. You're playing with house money going yeah, into the half. And, and again, you, do you have to score? I, maybe not have to score, but it certainly would be advantageous to put three or, or six or seven on the board right here, take a lead at halftime. Liberty Center will get the football first in half number two. Here's our first time out. TV 44 and WSN are nonprofit organizations supported by viewers like you. Now is a great time to make a donation in any size as a way to say thank you for this sports broadcast. Go to WTLW.com and click Donate Here. Donations are accepted 24 hours a day. Just visit WTLW.com. Swanton Welding scoreboard 28-25. Liberty Center in the lead, but Elmwood just receiving their second turnover of the half. Getting the football right back. You've got a hot quarterback, too, and you've had receivers who've been able to find holes in coverage. See if you take a couple shots at the end zone here. And still two timeouts to work with. Just Second and 10. Rush. Wicker throws and incomplete towards the near sideline. He's trying to find his intended target. And the man, Lex Vosca, looking for some separation. Incomplete third down. That ends a string of seven consecutive completions. After the initial fumble that Liberty Center had, they were able to hold. That when the ball was fumbled on, a, on the 20-yard uh, line. Third down and 10 from the Liberty Center, 28. Vosca in motion, stepping up. Room, trying to throw. They do, downfield incomplete. Under through his intended target. And there's a flag there right by where yeah. he threw the football. Late hit, let's see what the call is. Or did he step over the line of scrimmage because he was very close at one point. Actually, there's two flags down. And Liberty Center here. Their side clamoring. That's an ineligible man downfield. And that play stretched out. As long as it did, they're going to decline the penalty. With 27 seconds left. I'll bring a fourth down. Can't really fault a young man. He thought his quarterback was going to you know, take off and run. Instead, he pulled back so he could throw the football. And in the process, you got somebody downfield trying to make space for the quarterback's run. Fourth and 10. Can Wicker draw up here along with the Royals offense. Five wide set. Time, throws, lobs it out there, incomplete. Sorry, Near the end zone and no flags. The receiver yeah. fell down, it's incomplete. And turnover on downs for Elmwood. Let's throw some credit towards that uh, Liberty Center defense. You know, they've given the ball up twice deep in their own territory on fumbles, and neither time did it cost them points. That's amazing when you think about it, considering how great this Elmwood offense has been on the other side. Of course, Liberty Center, too, has had just the two fumbles that have derailed them. 21 seconds left. Did they take a knee? And, yep, that's what they're going to do. After that nearly chaotic sequence in which Elmwood was able to take the lead, they're just going to take this one to the half. And so are we. And a very exciting first half here at Steinecker Stadium in Perrysburg. Liberty Center has a 28-25 lead over the Elmwood Royals in this regional final. Oh, well, we uh, no, have no move been here. So, yep, there you go. Now the half has ended. Surprised to see everyone standing there still. But in any case, that is the half, and Liberty Center with a three-point lead on the Swanton Welding scoreboard. We'll come back, give you some analysis from this first half in just a moment on WOSN. 
Halftime here in Perrysburg, Liberty Center, 28, Elmwood 25 in this Region 5. Awesome game that we have, Division 5, Region 18, I should say, final between the Royals and the Tigers. And first half full of offense to reflect on, Mark. Both offenses really had it going. You could look at it from the standpoint of Elmwood had a couple nice chances after Liberty Center fumbles, but couldn't cash them in. That could be part of the difference in this game right well, now. Well, I, I think the whole game has boiled down to that. I, first of all, I did not think there'd be this many points on the board, and obviously both offenses have been hot, and the defenses have had trouble stopping them. But the two turnovers that Liberty Center had resulted in zero points for Elmwood. And then the three points that they've lost, perhaps more, at least we typically think of, you know, PAT one point. They've lost three points off of PATs, and therein is the difference in the game. Each team scored the same number of touchdowns. Yeah, a massive difference in the game, to say the least. Elmwood struggling on their point after touchdown attempts here in this opening half. And I'm sure there's plenty of intriguing stats and exploding stats to look at from half number one, Mark. Well, in the opening half, Liberty Center has rushed for 195 yards. They've got 61 on three carries from Zane Zider, 74 on seven carries from Matthew Orr, and uh, 60 yards on six carries for Colton Cruz. So they have been able to, to move the football that way. Zane Zider is four of five throwing the football for 88 yards. Gives them a total of 283 yards in the opening half, nine first downs. They had the only two turnovers in the football game. For Elmwood, you know, they've rushed it for 98 yards, 16 carries for 56 yards for Mason Oliver, and he's had to work very hard for every one of those. Uh, Alex Arnold has just one carry, but that was for a 23-yard touchdown, and Hayden Wickard has five carries for 19 yards. But he has thrown the football very well. Uh, Wickard is 13 of 20, 178 yards. Put that together with a 98 yards rushing. They have 276 yards in total offense, just seven yards total difference between the two teams. 15 first downs kind of shows you that Elmo has been able to grind it out more as opposed to the big plays that have taken place for Liberty Center. The leading receiver, Mike Oliver, has seven catches for 79 yards and a score. Uh, 77 yards on four catches for Alex Arnold and a score and Mason Mossberger has three catches for 16 yards, but one of those was for a score. So it's been a little bit of offense in each direction for Elmwood, and uh, the, the, it's a seven-yard total difference in a football game right now, but those three points from the PATs make a huge difference. They certainly have. Liberty Center will get the football to start the second half, which is on deck. The Tigers lead the Elmwood Royals 28-25 on WOSN. We hope you're ready for this second half. It should be a great one. The Royals and the Tigers going at it in this regional final game. Winner to the final four in Division Five. Liberty Center leads Elmwood 28 to 25. Kevin Peel, Mark Shine with you and our entire hardworking WOSN crew. Some of them braving the elements tonight. Very chilly here in Perrysburg for tonight's festivities. And now the second half is upon us and the offenses really seemed to control things in that opening half, but now it might be a stop here or there that decides how this game ends well, up. Well, there are two stops that have been important so far. Those came after the turnovers by Liberty Center. Th those are two right there. So let's see if there are any more of those type situations here. What type of defensive changes, what, what adjustments have been made by both coaches? The offenses are there. Both of them are getting over 275 yards here in the opening half. The offense has been there. What, what, what defensive changes can we make, or can we make any, because the offenses are so good? And, of course, the other part of it is Liberty Center is going to get the football first. They've already got this three-point lead, and I think it's time to see if, if Elmwood can make a stop early here in this half and make a statement. We're taking a look at the scoreboard brought to you by Swanton Welding Company, providing custom welding and fabrication services since 1956. Learn more at swantonweld.com. The Royals will move left to right in white here in this third quarter. Trying to come from behind here at the break. They've never been this far, never to a regional final. A new stage and trying to reach heights that they've never found. Well, you saw the program. The, the tee just, or the ball just blow off the tee. That, that wind is still right around 17 miles per hour. The chill factor is down to 12. So uh, if you're sitting on the, the Liberty Center fan side, that wind's right in your face tonight, too. Yeah, Elmwood, you're slightly shielded on yeah. the west side of the stadium, but not really. That cold creeps its way in on a night like this. Big kudos to the fans sitting uh, through absolutely. on a chilly yes, sir. evening. This one dropped right off the return. Snowed under. Yep, right around the 26. That's where Liberty Center 
will start this drive. Zane Zider, nice first half leading the way for the Tigers. That was Adam Moore just blasted him right there and got him down right there. Uh, what is it, about the 28? Is that where we're going to mm -hmm. start this at? On 28. Can you spell that? So and the drives for Liberty Center in that first half. Touchdown, fumble. Touchdown, touchdown, touchdown. Half. They downed it at the end of the half. Also lost one possession because of a fumble on a kickoff return. Matthew Orr will start this drive, angling to his right on the run, up to the 33, a gain of five. I'm sure Liberty Center would love to have a, a, five, a take first down and take move five yards on it every single time. I think they would like to be, a, obviously, they've been some kind of some big play things here in the opening half. I bet they would be really content, though, if they have some drives this time and perhaps limit the amount of time that Elmwood has the football here in this half. Zyder under center. And a handoff. And it looked like Orr was not going to get much, actually. Scratch that, that's Colton Cruz with the carry. Bounced off the initial tackler and was still able to get uh, out to the 37. Found a way to gain four, third and one. Those types of bruising runs could help Liberty Center try to salt this game away. Long drives, successful drives for points. Yeah, off that left edge, nice blocking again, and a first down to the 44. Golden Cruz is second straight tote. He gains the first down. Out to the 44-yard line. That is their seventh first down today by rushing. They had three by pass in the opening half. As they get to the 44-yard line, and he now is up to 71 yards rushing in eight carries. And it's over 1,100 yards on the season. In fact, approaching 1,200. Orr, along with Cruz and Zyder, all with big numbers on the ground already here tonight. They brought bodies that time. Mm -hmm. Trying to deceive there with a quick handoff to Orr. And, uh, not much, maybe a yard, hard earned yard for Orr. Second down and nine, they're on 45. Orr listed at six foot 185 and as a press box view, he seems bigger than that. He certainly runs harder than that. Liberty Center offense that rushed for 304 yards last week, limiting Coldwater to just 63 yards and two first downs in the game. Another high snap and Zyder losing tons of ground back to the 39. Yeah. I think Owen Zedorf was in there after the high snap. Those high snaps have doomed Liberty Center in spots here today, including one fumbled snap that Zyder couldn't recover. That's their fourth negative yardage play this evening. And sets up a big third down. Chance for the Royals to get off the field. Three minutes into the second half. Hurry up. Down to 10 on the play clock. And the Tigers just breaking the huddle. Down to four, down to three. Zyder oh, just barely got it off. Got play him. fake and he sacked. Back to the 30-yard line, Micah Oliver blew up the play. Coming off yeah. the edge, there he is. Untouched off the edge, got him on the blind side. Good stand by the Royals to start half number two. Back to the, what, 33? Another six-yard loss. Back-to-back six-yard losses for Zane Zyder. And Liberty Center stalls out on that first drive of the half. Her first punt is Not low. a good kick. It's not going to gain much distance at all. And down at the 50-yard line there by Trenton Cruz. So Elmwood at midfield will start this second half. Just a 17-yard punt a guy who's been averaging 36 on the season. His drop wasn't very good that time. You wonder if the wind didn't blow it. Mm -hmm. Very well could have. But good field position, Elmwood. That took four minutes off the clock almost for Liberty Center, but they punted it away. It didn't make the 50, it was on the other side of the 50. 
typical official parlance. The officials put the ball right down to 50, even though that's not exactly where it stops. So you have a clean start to the drive. Wickard yeah. goes down quickly for a modest loss on the play. That's Owen Box, the senior defensive lineman that got a hold of him. Made Wicker get on the move there quickly. Northwest Ohio Defensive Player of the Year. That certainly leads to one to believe the next week he'll be an All-Stater when those are announced. Mm -hmm. A worthy nominee, to say the least, of All-State. Honors. Second and 11. This is Mike Oliver in motion. Option play, pitch it to Oliver. Trying to get the edge. He cannot. There's too much speed. Look at the speed of Landon Cruz as he comes into this play. Just ran him down. You can see them stringing it out and then watch him come up right here and make the play. Loss of one. Quickly third and 12 for the Royals. Well, maybe both defenses have made some adjustments to that. Let's see how this play goes. Brought five. To the air, deep, downfield, one-on-one -on -one coverage and nearly able to haul it in, Alex Arnold, just out of his reach. Here's the deep ball again. It was a well-thrown ball. Arnold had a good grasp of where it was going. Just a little bit of uh, defensive effort out there. I thought he was going to make that catch. It would have been a difficult one, but really a good throw, particularly in the cold, windy conditions. Wickard punted earlier today for 34 yards. Each team has punted once tonight, but when your quarterback is the punter, and you're hanging around right around midfield, just about anything could happen right here. You never know. Play clock is running down, though. And now they stop the play clock here. Yeah. They'll reset it. Back to 25. Hooker to punt. And does send it on its way. Very solid punt at the 19, ball's Bubble. dropped. Yep. Elmwood's on it at the 22. Another fumble for the Tigers. Wow. Special teams, another turnover forced. Brennan Heiser recovers the fumble. Great punt here, that's how it started from Wickard. Well, you can see he, he had a beat on the football and then just lost it. Here's the punt coming up right here. As he moved up to make a play on it, you could see his eyes looked up a bit. Then they tackled him, knocked him off the ball, and there's the recovery. And once again, following a turnover. Great field position. Well, you have to think how many times can you give Elmwood free possessions like this before they cash it in. Mason Oliver stretches it outside, and Oliver is able to get inside the red zone. Down near the 16-yard line, picked up six on first down. You're playing with fire just a little bit to be handing the football back yeah. to Elmwood here. <laughs> and we've got a little delay for a moment. And they reset the play clock again and wind it. Down and four. Oliver again. Tough sledding. Maybe to the 15, but Landon Bockelman and his defensive line are hanging on and not letting go. There's no room to run. The, uh, the black shirted Liberty Center Tigers got off the ball quicker and stood up the offensive lineman. No place to run. Third down and three. Probably thinking four down territory here at the 15. To throw, open man, and in and out of the hands Solid of Mike Mason play. Mossbarger. Here's a look. The football's there. They knock it out of his hands right there. Oh, great coverage there by Derek Russell. Fourth yeah, down and three. Down. Is Liberty Center able to hold on once again? Huge play. Yes, it is. Tigers faithful below us, pounding on the bleachers and showing their support for LC. I think we might get a timeout. Down to five on the play clock, and we will. 
This is a huge play, and Coach Bishop certainly knows it as we're just past the halfway point of quarter number three. Check out our website, WOSN.TV, for scores and standings for more sports and teams than anyone in the state. Check out our broadcast schedule, upcoming games, social media posts, and more at WOSN.TV. Might see a Mark Shine appearance as well if you check out the website. Mark, uh, now they try to play. Keep, they try to keep old ugly people's picture <laughs> off of the, uh, the the website as much as they can. And it's a great website, though. Yeah. I, I spent a lot of time there. <laughs> it is a great website. So, of course, the app is wonderful too. We everybody's checking their apps up here. Not as many high school football games tonight at halftime, but no. a lot of lady ladies basketball, bowling was on there, hockey's on there. Love it. A lot of things on the app to check out as well tonight. Here, here comes the winter yeah, sports huge. and football still going on. Bunch formation right. Fourth and three out of the timeout. Moss Barter in motion to throw. Got He's going to run. run. He's, He's got, got tons of room, room. Yes, and he, he will have the first down. A smart play there yep. from Wickard. Was looking end zone, but then realized, oh, wait, I have tons of room to run the football. I'm just going to take the first down, move the chains for the team. Well, I think that might have been a design-type situation. The ball is, is it at the 10 or right there? Because if you look at what happened when they, they put a man in motion, they sent all the receivers to the right, one deep to the end zone on the left. And in the process of doing so, gave him that path to run. First and goal for the Royals. They'll start with Oliver, cuts it outside. Oliver, touchdown. The Elmwood Royals are into the lead in the third quarter on a Mason Oliver 10-yard touchdown run, 31-28. The blocking out in front of him this time. They got him stood up at the line of scrimmage. There's a hold they got away with right there. Then he runs through the tackle of number eight, Landon Cruzy, and is into the end zone. 31-28, Elmwood trying to make it a four-point game. And they finally score following a turnover. Third time's the charm. Susan, the extra point is good. It is. Elmwood has the lead. 32-28, 5.22 to go third quarter on WOSN. Our scoreboard tonight presented by Swanton Welding Company, providing custom welding and fabrication services since 1956. Learn more at swantonweld.com. The Elmwood Royals have taken the lead for the first time today. 32 to 28, just past the halfway point of quarter three. Third time's the charm. Yes. Third fumble, and Elmwood, after the first two, they didn't score points. This time they do. Oliver's 25th rushing touchdown of the year. Puts them up. Plus the PAT, 73 yards rushing on 19 hard-earned carries tonight for Mason Oliver, and his team now leads by four, and that PAT becomes hugely important. That takes the field goal out of the picture right now for Liberty Center. It sure does. And a kick, trying to cough and corner it down to the 11. A return, shrugged one tackler, still going past the 25. Just beyond Trenton Cruz on the return. Kevin, one of the things I've always enjoyed about athletics is looking at a team. We've led the whole football game, and now we're behind. How do we respond? Mm -hmm. and I think that uh, no matter what the sport, the first time you trail, how do you respond to that? I think it's always a key about a, about a team. And so important because the first drive of the half did not go well, six plays, but ended yep. up punting. You then tried to get the football back after an Elmwood punt and lost it in special teams. Well, you've been so dominant throughout the playoffs, too. Zane Zyder coming Look near out. side. There's, There's that respond. speed. Zyder wow. to the 50 and lost the ball late, although I believe he was down yeah, he at was. the 49. First down. There's your response, Mark. Absolutely. You put the ball in the hands of one of your athletes and you get him out in space. What a good block right there at the point of attack as well. He gets to the 49-yard line. That's 24-yard pickup for him. Yep, you can see ball came out while well, he was already down. Alex Arnold made the tackle. What an athlete Zane Zyder is. We've seen him pick off two balls in the end zone on PAT attempts. He's played quarterback extremely well, throwing the football. He's four or five there. He's ran it for 74 this evening. And we're just halfway into the third quarter. Keep it again, yeah, there Zyder. There again. And bowling his way up to the 46 for a gain of three. Now just throw blockers in front of them and let your QB succeed in the run game. 
Zider listed at 6'2", 190. And uh, his, his speed was uh, evident on the last carry where he had the 24-yard uh, pickup. Under center this time. Yeah, Coach Bishop knowing his team really has to swarm to the football with the high level of ball carriers that Liberty Center has at their disposal. Orr has the carry here for two. Yeah, swarming to the football. That defense swarmed to the football right there. Had to get a lot of hats on number uh, 35 to get him off his feet. Here's a big third and five in what is probably four down territory. Although maybe coach would choose to punt it deep and try to pin him back. And again, that wind coming from the far side of your screen to the near side. And it's going slightly into the breeze is Liberty Center in this third quarter. Third and five from the 44. And they'll keep it on the ground and he's not gonna get there. He's not. A stop of Colton Cruz. They're gonna need three. Game two. And Micah Oliver, the stop, will bring up fourth down. Interesting decision now for Coach Moeller. His last punt was not very successful. And Elmwood yeah. did stall out, but then the fumble after Elmwood had stalled out with their drive resulted in the Royals punching it in. Big third down, the fourth down. They need the 39. Zider under center. Pitch. Gumming oh, towards. Man. I don't Did think he, he there? got there. No, he didn't. He stopped at the 40. Yeah. I Matthew thought the Orr had a full head of steam, but the Royals got a hand on him and stopped him at the 40. I thought the last little bit of effort he might have gotten forward, but his knee goes down right there. Hip goes down, and Elmwood takes over. Big defensive play by Greg Bishop's team. Cannon Endicott went low, and then Allen Sterling went high to stop his forward progression, and he gained only two. Had the football for almost three minutes, picked up some yardage, but not could not get the big fourth down coverage. From their own 40, first and 10. Mossbarger in motion, shovel pass to him. Mossbarger off along the edge. It will get to the 47. Got a player down seven. too. Tenton Cruz. Tenton Cruz is down. Man, that's not good news for Liberty Center. If that's Trenton Cruz. We'll have a stoppage here for an injury after the seven yard gain. We'll come right back on WOSN. 32-28, Elmwood and Liberty Center. Close game, Royals have the football, second and three. Coach Moeller really giving it to yeah. the officials here during the break. Looks like Cruz is okay, but took a bit of a shot there. The replay before that, looked like it got poked in the eye. Somebody's hand got in there inside his face mask, and that was why Coach was unhappy, but second and three here. See right, it's at the bottom of your yeah. screen there. Maybe just out of your vision. Yep. Quick screen set up. Arnold trying ball to cut it back ball. inside. Ball's Lost the ball. Yep. And the Tigers are on it. Right near midfield at the 49. And Elmwood coughs it up for the first time today. Ball jarred loose by Raylan Wentz, the linebacker. Yeah, for the first time today, Elmwood Royals have turned the football over. And let's see now what Liberty Center can do with this. Well, that is a big swing Completion. in favor of the Tigers. Completion plus the fumble. He was trying to struggle ahead to get to the first down stick at the 50-yard line and just fumbled the football. So in Elmwood territory, Liberty Center takes over. First time starting in plus field position today for Liberty Center. The field position battle has been won by the Royals mostly, but they just haven't cashed it in all the time. Matthew Orr for two yards to the 47. To start this drive. That would be carry number 13 for 89 yards. 60 of those came on one carry. 
He's had a couple of five-yard carries since then. Everything else has been two and under. Elmwood run defense stiffening in this second half. Second and eight. Not on that play. Yeah, Matthew Orr off to the races. Still on his feet inside the 20 and ripped down near the 16-yard line. Matthew Orr gets loose for a gain of 31. Yeah, big carry right there for him. Good hole up the middle for him. You can see the outside fake that took place. And they finally sprung him here for 31. Tigers wasting no time trying to cash in the turnover. Minute to go in the quarter. Zider under center. And a handoff and plenty more room to roam for Orr. And finally taken down near the five. Easy to see why he's a Liberty Center fanboy, right? I mean, he is so strong and so determined when he gets to this area of the field, and he just drags people to the five and picks up rushing first down number 10 on the night for his team. war has got to 24 rushing touchdowns, including one earlier tonight. See if they go back to him again. First and goal from the five. Trying to retake the lead, or... Not on that try. Nope, cut him down at three. A tough stop there from the Elmwood defense. Put in a tough spot here. This yeah. possession beginning at the 49. Ball will be on the three. Tigers might be content to take this to quarter number four. And be. they will. Three in the books, the Elmwood Royals. Outscoring the Liberty Center Tigers by seven in that quarter. Seven to nothing. It's 32-28, heading to the fourth. That's next on WOSN. The Liberty Center Tigers driving as the fourth quarter begins, trailing the Elmwood Royals by a 32-28 score on the Swanton Welding scoreboard. Kevin Peel, Mark Shine with you in the booth. Thanks for joining us. Tigers trying to regain the lead here right out of the gates in the fourth different formation this time, Wildcat stuff. Zane Zider will try and take it himself. That's a touchdown, yeah. and Liberty Center has the lead back on Zane Zider's three yard score, and it's 34-32. His third rushing touchdown of the evening, 12th of the season. They just put blockers in front of him, and Zane Zider finds Paydirt for a big touchdown. They regain the lead. Trying to make it a three point lead now from Rosebrook. Snap and the kick and it is good. Liberty Center now leads 35-32 over Elmwood on the Swanton Welding scoreboard. Our scoreboard presented by the Swanton Welding Company tonight providing custom welding Fabrication services since 1956. Learn more at swantonweld.com. Out of town or can't get WOSN? WOSN is now streaming 24 7 online on Roku and Apple TV. Download our Roku channel and Apple TV app to subscribe. A $100 donation allows you to watch anywhere in the world. Visit app.wosn.tv to sign up. Well, the fumble turned out to be advantageous for Liberty Centers. They were able to take it in. 159 off the clock, just 49 yards, five plays. To take the lead in the football game again at 35-32. So Elmwood was finally able to exercise some demons taking that fumble that LC had in the third quarter and scoring. But Liberty Center cashes in a turnover as well from the Royals. And now here we are. Well, they kick off. Again, how does momentum play through this? Here's Elmwood now. They, they fought back, fought back, took a lead. Now, after a fumble, they're down by three. How do they respond? Goodness, this has been a good high school football oh, game. Oh, it's been an amazing game. Division 5, Region 18, final. And going outside, that's Arnold. Alex Arnold near the 30 on that return. Good run back. If you're Coach Bishop, you have to be impressed with your team just battling because yeah. you've been behind essentially the entire game. 
and have not executed as well as you would like and point after touchdowns, have given up a couple plus field position situations after LC fumbles, but yet here you are down three with the football in the fourth. That's all you can ask for. Well, and you know, that last play was from a different formation. Two blocking backs up ahead of the quarterback, and they just powered it in the end zone. Big, that's big boy football right there. All alone in the gun is Wickard. First and 10 from the 30. And he's going to run it. Oh, LC had that measured nicely. He's going nowhere. No gain for Wickard. They Kevin, almost expected the Q so run. I'm so proud of you. I watch Sunday afternoon football, and they will say empty backfield. The backfield is not empty. The quarterback <laughs> is there. So I'm so proud of you, the fact that you recognize the fact that there is someone in the backfield. <laughs> he sure was. He is again. And so were a lot of black shirts the last time. Here they come again. He'll throw. And has a man. That is a catch. And now a fumble, fumble. Yep. Is it at the 38. Completion and fumble? I believe so to Micah Oliver. Liberty Center gets another huge turnover. That they do. There's the catch. And the ball comes out. Great defense from Tanner Klein. Went right after the football and punched it out of there. How about that? Because after being error free in the opening half, back to back turnovers. Let's see what Liberty Center Tigers do with this one in a three point lead. And even though the offenses have been so successful here tonight, a two score lead for Liberty Center would be huge at this juncture of the ball game. So Klein recovers the fumble or rather forces the fumble. And now Liberty Center will have it at the 39. And Zider oh, yeah. runs it outside. Stretching it out as long as he can to the 30. Keep the clock running. A good first down play for the Tigers. It was good fake inside to Orr. That's the guy you, you, know, you think of being the big hammer inside. He faked extremely well to him, then got the edge for nine. Play clock is wide, or play book is wide open when it's, you know, second and one from your the other team's thirty. Sider under center, and Cruz tripped up at the twenty-five. Colton Cruz trying to get a full head of steam going, gain four, has another first down. Colton Cruz now has 75 yards in nine carries. It's a really good second, third option there. They have so many weapons in the backfield. Of course, a good offensive line in front of them. Elmwood needs to make a stand. They did so the first two times there were turnovers. Same formation on first and 10. Zyder gives to Orr. Orr finds his way through. Has another first down. Into the red zone at the 11-yard line. Matthew Orr, a strong gain. Ran right out of a tackle. 15-yard pickup with for him. Now 17 carries, 148 yards for big Matthew Orr. Another great game for the tailback. The score makes it a two-possession game if they can stick this in the end zone. At the 11, first and 10. And they will give it to Cruz. Not much going on there for Colton Cruz. Nice Colton. motion on the play. Almost had fooled me yeah. fooled there. It was just a handoff to Cruz. Colton Cruz has 15 rushing touchdowns on the season. He's a good option down in here, especially, you know, you're looking at the big hammer in Matthew Orr, the speed of Zyder uh, on the perimeter. He becomes a good option. Second and eight. Zyder play fake, goes outside and tripped up as he reaches the five. Nearly broke that for more. Zyder here, it almost looked like he still could have pulled it for a throw if there was a design to throw. They have not thrown the football in the yeah, second half. Mm -mm. Every play has been a running play here in the second half. Third down and four, need to get to the one. Move the chains. This is 
Zider. And a handoff to Orr trying to fall forward and he's bottled up. Alan Sterling had some help, made the stop, moved it forward to the four and it will be fourth and about three. Here's decision time, it's a field goal from basically extra point position or they need about uh, what, uh, two yards, a yard and a half for a first down. Game That's hanging the direction in the balance. They're going. Fourth and about two. I like this call. I think you got to go here. Agreed. Zider. Hand off. Touchdown, yeah. Colton Cruz. Great design, great decision by Coach Moeller, and Liberty Center is a two score lead. A little dive play off the left tackle right there. Just leaning on the run game, and Cruz finds the end zone. Right behind Landon Bockelman. So following the second turnover, they just have to go 39 yards. Oh, nice play there for Liberty Center. Go up by nine. And the extra point is up and it is good. Tigers have opened up a 10 point lead. 42-32, 7.42 to go on WLSN. Our scoreboard tonight presented by Swanton Welding Company, providing custom welding and fabrication services since 1956. Learn more at SwantonWeld.com. LC, the 42-32 lead over Elmwood, their largest lead of the game in a big uh, spot. Opportunistic, they score on two turnovers. Those 14 points put them up 10. Plenty of time left for an Elmwood rally. A score quick though, Max Walker. Kick this one away for the Tigers. And bounces one here on the turf. It's fumbled, but the Royals will fall on it. Plenty of time to do so at their own 28. So here's a storyline to follow because Micah Oliver, of course, fumbled the ball in that last series, did not play defense. You could see him on the far sideline, number two. He's out on the edge. That's good news for Elmwood, yeah. but he was not able to play in that last series, and he can be a big part of that defense. Now he's going to have to find a way to try and grind through this last 739 with his team needing him and needing at least 10 points to tie this game. Well, needing 10 to tie and Aiden more Wicker, than 10 to win. Ed Wicker, Wicker 16 of 25, now 17 of 26, but that's a very short game. Speaking of, that's Micah Oliver with a catch for no, no gain. Maybe a yard. And Oliver had such a huge first half, too, for Elmwood. They need him running routes and gaining chunk plays. Throw this out wide and didn't make it to Alex Arnold out on the edge. And that's a quick third down now coming up for Elmwood. Mike Oliver has nine catches for 92 yards. He has a score tonight. That is a serious weapon on the far side of the field if he's able to compete at the level. Yeah, there's Micah right there. Yeah. Seems to be taking it easy when he can. Yeah, he's. Uh, I don't think he's 100%. That is absolutely for sure. Let's see if he's got enough in there. He could make a contribution, however. All alone is Hayden Wickard, third and nine. To throw, time, steps up, throws downfield, and oh, oh what God. a ball! What a ball to Cannon Endicott, who will be tracked down at the eight yard line. Wow. What a ball, he dropped it right in the breadbasket of Cannon Endicott for a huge play to keep the Royal season alive. 69 yard pickup and a first down. What a throw. On the run, what a throw. Gotta like Hayden Rickard. Wow. A breathtaking throw there from Hayden Wickard first with everything goal. hanging into balance. He'll first roll right to throw on first and goal. Stepping up, trying to find some room and he is upended. He paid the price for holding on to the football there for a gain of a yard. That is one of the better throws you'll see under uh, duress, moving to his left, the righty QB, and he threw an absolutely perfect ball to Endicott. The, the defense was not in that bad a position, a little short of where they needed to be, but not badly. Here's a run. 
Mason Oliver rumbling on the ground and steps wow. out, nearly steps out of a tackle. Down to the three. This is tough sledding running right here. Landon Cruz just couldn't bring him down. Four carries, 77 yards, and a score tonight for Mason Oliver. And from the three-yard line, his team's got two cracks now to, to get in the end zone. Third and goal from the three. The running back with him is Alex Arnold. Fake throw out wow. wide. What a catch. Yep. And a touchdown for Micah Oliver, his second of the night. Royals down four. What great timing on this play. They get, to get his body to the end zone and throw it right here. Fakes like he's coming across the middle of the field, goes out. Second touchdown catch, 10th catch of the night, 95 yards. Here's the PAT attempt. Don't tell him he's banged up. No. He sure didn't show it there. Two big catches on that drive, not for man, many yards. What an answer no by Elmwood. No gain, Elmwood. and then that gain. Yeah, what an answer by Elmwood, though. You're down 10, and you needed seven. They go get him. See how the PAT goes. Susan, and that one Another well off. One. Yep. Susan, no good. 5.38 to go in this one. Liberty Center, a 42-38 lead over Elmwood on WOSN. Our Swanton Welding scoreboard now reads Liberty Center 42, Elmwood 38. Past the halfway point of quarter number four. Micah Oliver, a clutch three-yard touchdown reception there, Mark. Yeah, it certainly was. Faked to the center of the field like he was going post, went out just a step or two towards the sideline. Well-thrown ball, and they're back at 42-38. Liberty Center expecting onside kick, and they kick it deep. Fielded at the 18. And trying to juke this outside to the 30. That return and not much further. Well, the Elmwood offense did their job, and now let's see if their defense can stand up. They need a stop here. And when they get the football back, if they get the football back, yes. they'll need a touchdown. They do have two timeouts remaining. Liberty Center has not used a timeout here in the second half. How about Wicker tonight? He is 19 of 29 and four touchdowns. Wow. One at night when 200. his team needed him most. Yeah, I got him for 202 unofficial yards through the air, too. Zane Zider, handoff, Matthew Orr. Look, Look out. out, Matthew Orr. Inside the 40 and down to the 33-yard line. Matthew Orr not playing around. Uh, That's a gain of 37 and a first down. First down goes to the 33-yard line, 32-yard line. Good pop up the center. And points here puts Elmwood in a really bad spot with only five minutes to go. You say 37? Yes. You said 187 yards of the night for him. A rushing attack, getting it done for the Tigers. Or and Play clock. Colton Cruz in the backfield. Just beat it. They did. They hand it off to Orr. More room, and he nearly broke it for a touchdown. He was an ankle tackle yeah. away, gained 11. You can see he's a little bit unhappy with the tackle that was made by Mason Oliver because he tried to roll his ankle up. Watch this. <laughs> to the 21. Pickup of 11. First and 10 from the 21, Zyder. Under center. Blitz coming. And Ooh. off, and Colton Cruz, oh, takes a hit. Yes. The 15 yard line. He was in the arms of number 28, Frank Blair, and then got a hit high right here. Yeah, shoulder to shoulder. Six-yard gain. Good, yeah, it was a good six-yard gain. He's got 86 yards rushing on the evening. 
If, if Zyder gets seven and Cruz gets 14, they've got 300-yard rushers this evening, one of whom, Matthew Orr, could go over 200 on his next carry. Amazing. And they have a, been playing with a play clock here in this drive. As we're, under four, as we're under four here in the quarter. Time a factor. And down in distance a factor, too. Colton Cruz keeps it moving and has a first down to the 10. Gain of five. Good little run there by Cruz, bouncing off a would-be tackler. And they have not thrown a pass in the second half. It is all but on the ground. Yeah, their only attempted pass turned into a run because it was a sack on the first series. So it ended up being Correct. not a pass. And they cannot get a first down. They are just on the 10 yard line and cannot get a first down. First and goal. Gonna come down to a goal line stand to save the Royals season. First and goal from the 10 and a handoff and Matthew Orr is bottled up. Might have lost a yard. Mm -hmm. Back to the you know, 10 and a half. Elmwood is in the box. I mean, they, they've got everybody up on the line of scrimmage. They're bringing bodies from all different angles. They're, they're trying to stop this run. But we're under three, and they're going to have to start using some timeouts here soon. Yep, two remaining, as Mark was mentioning. And Liberty Center smartly running down that play clock. And handoff, Colton Cruz to the in. end zone. Yes, he is. 11 yard touchdown run for Colton Cruz to salt it away. The Tigers have a two score lead with 2.26 to go. That becomes his 14th carry and takes him to 102 yards on the evening. His second touchdown run, giving him 17 on the season. Liberty Center punches it in. Extra point away from Rosebrook, trying to add on to that lead. And he sure can. 2.26 to go here in Perrysburg. The Tigers on the precipice of moving on. It's go time for the Elmwood Royals, down 49-38. Here on the Swanton Welding scoreboard. Some of the Royals faithful. Starting to file out. It's a bit early for that. Yeah. They're, they're big play offense. They can get seven if they get an onside kick. They're, they are still in this as, as rapidly as they've been able to score. Especially some of the throws that we saw even just last drive, the 69-yard completion from Wickard to Endicott. Big chunk play that Elmwood needed at a critical time. This kick's coming near side, fielded at the 28. And ducking out of bounds near the 35 is Brennan Heiser. Bounce it down the field to kind of eliminate the opportunity for a big run back. Make one of those up guys field it, and they will get the ball on their own 34-yard line. Liberty Center, just they just score in chunks, don't they? Their last three possessions have been touchdowns. They just seem to be able to step on the gas when they need to offensively. Now they're going to play some prevent stuff here. Two deep safeties, rushing three. Certainly have tonight. Wickard to throw. Out wide, incomplete, threw it into his bench. What they're telling Wickard right now is we'll give you some short stuff, then we're going to make tackles, but you're not going to throw the ball over our head like you did on the 69-yard play the last time. Cannot lose guys in the secondary. Elmwood with two timeouts. You get a score and then a chance for an onside kick. Clock stopped after the incompletion here. Wickard alone in the shotgun. Sends Mason Oliver in motion. Wickard to throw. Steps up. Pressure, throws downfield. He's ran out of bounds. Incomplete. That is the most yeah. amazing catch that you won't see because it was out of bounds incomplete. Well, he ran out of bounds for a good eight or 10 yards. An incompletion, wow, what a grab. Alex Arnold, 
It's now third down and 10. The winner will face Canfield South Range, who has moved on with a 49-21 win over Perry today. There's still, there's still two and a half to go in that game on our WOSN app, but certainly uh, South Range is going to win the football mm -hmm. game. That game to be played at Clyde next Friday. Third down, 10. Wicker. Man, trying to get away. Got He's him. down at the 27. A sack for the LC Tigers in a key spot. Bring up fourth down in the ball game. Matthew Orr tracked him down. What doesn't Matthew Orr do well for this football team? Very persistent in his rush that time as he came around the edge. Wicker tried to step up into the pocket and then he just got to him. Here's the game, fourth and 16. LC faithful on their feet. Bring a blitz this Wicker time and they got him sacked, again. And that's it. The Liberty Center Tigers on their way to a regional championship. They get the final stop they needed. Did you see who got him? Trenton Cruz, who went out injured a little while ago, back in there, and he came in from his end position and made the tackle. So back-to-back -back sacks will end it. What an effort tonight from Elmwood. They battled bravely, but the Liberty Center Tigers too much tonight. Now just a couple plays away from finishing this one off. Still two timeouts for Elmwood, but the Tigers will be able to run most of the rest of this clock off. And under center, Zyder. First and 10, and Orr will get to the 21. And he'll be stopped. And I don't see a timeout being called. They're gonna let this one run. Second and eight. What a season for the Elmwood Royals, 12 and two. They're going to end up their only other loss, that loss 49 to 48 against rival Eastwood. Several weeks back, they're on a six game winning streak. A great season, it never reached a regional final game. But Liberty Center gonna march on here. Now they can go to the victory formation. Zane Zider takes a knee. And they won't have to run another play. Let the celebration begin for the Tigers. Liberty Center, still unblemished, 14-0. What a season, what a game. Yes, it absolutely was. Both these teams so deserving of this spot, of this game, this setting here at Perrysburg, so wonderfully hosted by the Yellow Jackets staff here tonight, but at Liberty Center will take home the victory, 49-38. They'll play at Clyde next Friday night, most likely against Canfield South Range. For the final four. We will take a quick break and come back with final stats and final reaction from Perrysburg on WOSN. The Liberty Center Tigers making their eighth trip to the state semifinals all time. A big time victory for LC 49 to 38 here today. And we were already re kind of reminiscing on this amazing season that Elmwood had, finishing up 12-2. and two. Certainly nothing to hang their he heads about here tonight. They battled all the way to the end, but LC just a little too much. Well, that's true. I, I would really be proud of what Elmwood did. They got behind, and they chased them the entire football game, finally took a lead, but congratulations, Liberty Center. They took two big turnovers, and they turned them into points, and they were able to convert on all of their extra points, unlike uh, Elmwood. So uh, a really nice football game tonight for by both teams, but uh, especially, I think, for Liberty Center to move on. Furthest trip into the postseason for Elmwood. Of course, Liberty Center, they were tested here tonight. And I'm sure Coach Moeller likes that. They're tested as yeah. you continue to go along this path. They had a comfortable win against Coldwater last week, but they really were tested here tonight and put in some difficult spots. Elmwood came back and actually had a lead in the second half, but the offense responded with three straight huge touchdown drives. Yeah, that they did. And, and, you know, when the game got close and they got behind, they were able to make plays defensively and offensively. Obviously, there's two scores that came after the fumbles are, are key to that. 
But then when the game got on the line, I took a pair of big sacks to end any Elm Elmwood hopes late. So the defense really did step up as the game progressed. Yeah, regional championship for Liberty Center. What stats stand okay. out to you, Mark? Well, the Elmwood, Elmwood Royals, they rushed it for 107 yards this evening. Mason Oliver will finish his career with 20 carries tonight for 77 yards and a score. Alex Arnold had a 23-yard run as well. Hayden Wicker, tonight he was 19 of 31 without interception, 266 yards. They put 373 yards on the, on the board tonight. Did the Elmwood Royals, 18 first downs, but they did turn it over twice. The, uh, the, the Liberty Center Tigers, they rushed it for 394 yards this evening. Uh, Zane Zider had 10 carries for 93 and three scores. Matthew Orr had 22 carries for 199 and a score. Colton Cruz had 14 carries for 102 yards, and he had it two scores as well. The, the quarterback, Zider, threw the ball just five times tonight, none in the second half. He missed his first pass. He completed the next four. He had two touchdown passes in there, 88 yards total. They had 482 yards in offense this evening. They also had 18 first downs but they turned it over three times this evening in their victory tonight. 49-38 Liberty Center wins a regional championship once again. What's your final thoughts from this excellent game tonight? Mark? I thought it was a really, really good high school football game played in some adverse conditions. I thought earlier in the day when I saw the wind and the, the cold and all that kind of stuff going on, I thought this is going to be a relatively low-scoring game, but the offense were able to succeed this evening. This Liberty Center was able to step up and make a couple big defensive plays more than uh, Elmwood Royals were this evening. Liberty Center marching on to the state semifinals once again. And in Division 5, they win it 49-38 over the Elmwood Royals. Thanks so much for joining us here, our excellent crew. Tony Malanga, Beckett Stark, Tristan Atkinson, of course, Mark Shine joining me in the booth, Perrysburg High School, and Taylor Rogers and Chuck Jaco doing an awesome work hosting this event here. They were waiting so long <laughs> to get an event like this, a big-time regional game, and they finally got it, and they hit it out of the park. Excellent job hosting. We look forward to the next one. Liberty Center, they're moving on. The final score on the Swanton Welding scoreboard, 49-38 over Elmwood. Thanks for joining us. For Mark Shine, I'm Kevin Peel saying good night from Steinecker Stadium in Perrysburg.